Hello viewers who are watching us on BTN TV. Uh, this is Mwesko Mgua Bosco, the Teacher Wisdom Center. I your science teacher as usual. Yes, so yeah, we are going back to go look at different work as we do every time. Yes, so today's topic is simply, yes, about plant reproduction. Because last time we looked at uh, uh, plants, looking at classifying plants, okay, looking at different groups, uh, those which are flying and flying plants, the way they reproduce, those of spore producing, nano producing, nano spore producing, or which are the seed producing. We look at that. We compare those of, uh, on the side of flying plants, checked on those which are colonial or non colonial plants. Um, the monocots and dicots, we went through all that, and that gave us a clear view of plants in general. So for this time, I yeah, want to look at uh, plant reproduction to see how do plants reproduce. Uh, yes, so let us move uh, to plant reproduction. So uh, simply, when we look at the plant reproduction, we need to take our minds back, looking at uh, reproduction. Yes, we define reproduction uh, as the process by which living things give rise to young ones. Okay. So the same thing in plants also. You see the process by which living things give rise to young ones of similar kind. That's uh, simply uh, reproduction. So the same reproduction in plants and in animals, it's, uh, you can define the same way. Some people can also simply say the process by which living things increase in number. Okay? So for this time, we want to check how do plants reproduce. So looking at plant production, uh, we look at two types of reproduction. Okay, which happen in plants, uh, which are the uh, number one, which is uh, asexual reproduction, and then uh, the second would be sexual reproduction. These types of reproduction do happen in plants, okay, but for animals, majorly we only have asexual reproduction. Then, for the case of plants, as we look at this time, for plants, uh, have two types of reproduction, which is asexual and sexual reproduction. So simply, uh, for asexual reproduction, it's a type of production that does not involve reproductive cells. The, the gametes, okay, the male and female gametes are not involved in this kind of reproduction. That's why we can also refer to asexual reproduction as vegetative reproduction, okay? Yes, uh, majorly you can find part of the plant, yes, can be used to uh, to reproduce other plants, for example, talk of, of, of uh, cassava in case of that. Cassava plants can use of stems, cut stems, which is called stem cutting. If you have banana plants, you can uh, call that uh, use of suckers. Okay, in the size so also is the use of suckers. Then, uh, yeah, there are many ways. Talk of uh, fruits, we can talk of grafting process, talk of layering. Those uh, methods of asexual production. So we shall look at that as we move. So for this case, it just go straight to as to sexual reproduction in plants. For sexual reproduction in plants, here simply we look at a type of production where reproductive cells are involved. Okay. So one can define sexual production in plants that are reproduction that involves reproductive cells. Reproductive cells can also be referred gametes okay this will involve the male gametes and the female gametes so this one simply uh, will lead uh, to uh, production okay in plants so to get this clearly uh, we can look at a table here we look at different cells okay yes so uh, here you can be given uh, an activity yes and ask like here to one, you ask, copy the table below. Yes, in this table here, you want to compare, look at uh, majorly, okay, uh, sex, sexual reproduction in plants. We see which are the reproductive cells, but it's better we compare to animals. That's when uh, you can easily uh, pick the ground properly. So just look at these two. We compare the plants, the cells in the plants, okay, and the reproductive cells in the plants. But remember, Productive cells are also called gametes. So you can have the male gametes and female gametes. Or uh, the male productive cells and then the female reproductive cells. 
Yes, so checking on our table here, complete the table below. So here we are given, you can check here, on this side we are given plants and then we have animals. Then we have female reproductive cells, okay, we want to check for plants and then for animals, and then male reproductive cells for plants and then animals. Yes, so in a sexual production, we need to see which are those cells that are involved in production. Let's check in plants here. Simply in plants here, the female productive cells in plants, uh, they are the ovules, okay? Ovules. So, the ovules will fuse with the male cells in plants. So, this can check us. So, from here, let us check again the female product, the male productive cells, okay? Or the male gametes in plants. Yes, this will be the pollen grains. Okay, pollen grains. Yes, so uh, in plants we can see that the female productive cells, they are of, they are ovules, we call them ovules, and then the male reproductive cells of plants are pollen grains. So these ones are the ones that will be fused, or that they are fused, okay? Yes, to lead to reproduction or fertilization in the plants. Then, this is why we see that uh, 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 in, the, uh, in the sexual production, that uh, uh, reproductive cells are involved, are used. Okay? So, which are the ovules and then the pollen grains. When you compare to plants, so, so to animals, the female reproductive cells will be called ova. Okay? Yes. Yeah, when it's one, we can say ova, but when they are men, yes, ova. So, in singular, you can say ova. Okay, yes. Then the, uh, the male productive cells uh, in animals, uh, these will be the sperms. Okay, the sperms are the male reproductive cells or the male gametes to, the, uh, to, to female animals, they will be over or in a singular ovum. So these ones are the ones which fuse or join in case fertilization has to take place. So we can be asked, okay, that uh, uh, all of ovules at plants, okay, as dash at humans, they do but what? Can see over. Or we can be asked still that uh, over, uh, over at humans, okay, as dash at plants, we can say ovules. This will also, they can be asked, but uh, yes, uh, Pollen grains at plants as dash at humans. So we are comparing the, the male productive cells with the sperms. So this is a clear indicator that these cells, reproductive cells, are the ones which are fused, uh, okay, in the case of production has to take place. So this is a sexual, this is sexual reproduction in plants. So when uh, we move ahead, okay, uh, we can uh, look at uh, Reproduction in plants, basically, okay, or how plants reproduce. Majorly, plants reproduce by means of flowers, okay. That means for within the flowers, the male cells and female cells will fuse, okay, uh, which will lead to fertilization in the plants. And then that's why it's now we want to go ahead and look at flowers. So simply, a flower is a reproductive part of a plant. The part of a plant that is used to reproduce, okay, or to give, that I can hope in, a, a, let's say, in giving birth or raise to other new plants, we need to have the flowers. Good. So simply, a flower is a reproductive part of a plant, the part that is majorly used in the reproduction. Flowers have both the female and the, the male gametes. We firstly say that uh, for uh, the male ga the gametes are also called reproductive cells. So here we look at reproductive cells in plants. We are all, we also refer them to male gametes in the plants. So sorry, the gametes in the plants. So male gametes in the plants, uh, they are pollen grains, and female gametes in the plants are ovules. Okay. Yes, so looking at the parts of a flower, uh, this can give us a clear view how uh, this, uh, looking at the parts of a flower, the functions, 
and uh, then uh, how they reproduce. So this will give us a look at the main part of a flower and the female part of a flower. Majorly, we're looking at a flower, we can classify in three parts. The external parts, okay? Like uh, the petal, the sepals, okay? Yes, uh, the, those are those parts, okay? Talk over the, the stalk, those are all parts which are external. Then the internal parts, look at uh, those, the male cell, the, 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 the male part of flower and the part of a flower, which we shall move ahead. Yes, so looking at this flower here, uh, you can easily look at different parts, right from primary four, you look at possible flower, primary five, the same thing. And the uh, primary six, it becomes easy that we make kind of a revision. So, yes, so look at this, this part here. This is the filament. The filament, uh, and then the anther. So this part here combined, this gives us the male part of flower, which is the stamen. Uh, when we come to this side here, we have this part stigma, have the style, okay? And then we have the ovary, this one here, ovary. These three parts, okay, they are given one name, okay? And this name is capo or pistil. So the pistil or capo is the female part of a flower. Then we go to other parts external, like uh, we have, um, okay? Yes, we have uh, the petal, we have the sepal, okay? These are very important parts of the flower. We are going to look at the functions of each part here. But still, you can't forget the ovules. Ovules, they are within the ovary, okay? Uh, so, uh, this can take us to this side here, looking at another uh, number. Yes, so uh, in your activity here, we did the first number together. So the second number here, uh, you, but you have, you can go through it and do it. Eh? So it says that uh, name the parts of a flower below. So simply look at the flower here. We have got a just a specimen here. Name the part. Name this part here. Look at this part here. All these parts. Okay. Yes. So name all the parts of a flower. This is uh, just kind of revision from what we've been looking at. So do this. So uh, you also asked number three, okay? Which part of a flower receives pollen grains? Yes, uh, from this you can be able to answer this. So as we move ahead, we shall look at uh, the part of a flower that we call the middle part. Shall we say that this majorly looking at uh, the middle part of a flower, okay? Or we shall see uh, this out, we get this out here, this middle part of a flower, okay? So, the male part of the flowers will pass like uh, the anther or anther head and the filament. So these two parts form the male part of the flower. And when you come to the female part of the flower, we get this cut out, this, okay? This will show the female part of the flower, majorly, yes. Uh, it does also include the ovules, you can be asked to name this, okay? Yes. So immediately, uh, this, checking on uh, this part here, this part, combining with this. So those ones give us the female part of a flower. There are three parts. The, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. So form the couple. So please use your time, uh, name parts of this flower. It's very important. And then answer number three. Okay, so we can now uh, move ahead. So we say that for the stamen, this is the name of the flower. It has got parts like anther. This part is the part that uh, help to reproduce, okay? Help uh, in, in, in producing the male cells, okay? The quality grains are produced in the anther, okay? So the anther produces male cells called pollen grains and then you have the filament this part here filament holds the anther head in position okay uh, so this uh-huh so uh we can also check on the female part of a flower okay <coughs> the female part of a flower here yes 
we can say this part here is called the pistil or carpal. So you can be asked, what name is given? Now the name part of a flower, it is the p it is a pistil or carpal. So a pistil is made up of four parts, okay, which is stigma, style, ovary, and ovules. When we ask the main three parts, you can talk of stigma, style, and ovary because the ovary are found within the ovary. So we can see the pistil here. This part which receives pollen grains, that is stigma. Okay. Then the style. The style holds the anther head in position. Okay. And it's also a passage of pollen grains from the stigma to the ovary or to the ovaries. Then here, another part here, we have uh, the ovary. So stigma, style, and ovary, they are the main three parts of the pea steel. When you are asked for, then you can add the ovules which are found within here. So we shall look at the ovary. We shall, when you go ahead, we're looking at fertilization. We shall see that the ovary develops into a fruit after fertilization, and the ovules will grow into seeds after fertilization. So we shall go ahead looking at that. Uh, okay. So then uh, we have seen the male part of a flower already. Uh, we can move next part here. So. But if you are not here, uh, the male productive cells are the point grains and the female cells are the ovules. So you can be asked, what name is given to the following? Uh, the male productive cells or male gametes, so those ones who refer them to as point grains, and then the female reproductive cells refer them to as ovules, that is in the plants. So uh, yes, so we can uh, be given a practical, we can do a pra have a practical uh, lesson here, a practical work, we can do about flowers. So uh, move within your compound. Yes, observe different flowers and write short notes about them. Cut, I'll uh, make a cutout, check on the inner parts, check uh, which part, which is the male part, which is the female part, okay? Yes, and look at different parts. So you can do this within your free time. Uh, observe, get a flower, different flowers, and observe, look at different parts, and note their functions. Uh, then, uh, so uh, this can push us to the uses, okay, of the flower. Uh, majorly say yes. So we can be asked, okay, how are flowers useful in general? Okay. Uh, how are flowers useful? Okay, yes, flowers majorly you can see some flowers are used as food. So people can get flowers, you can be eaten as food. Uh, this is pollen. Then uh, they can be used to get money. You want to cancel flowers and get money, so it's a source of income. Many flowers are also given as gifts. You can give a flower to your friend. Okay, yes, it's a gift. And then flowers are used to show love. So that's why they are presented to people, to friends. Okay. So flowers and leaves are used to get money. That's why they can be sold. Okay. So source of income. Then some flowers are used to make perfumes. Okay. Yeah. This is also good. Flowers can be used to make perfumes. And then uh, talk about uh, used to make insecticides. So some flowers are used to make insecticides. These insecticides, these ones are that can be chemicals that kill insects. So these are, these are some of these of flowers. Uh, okay. So uh, from here, you're given an exercise which you can look at, at again ahead. Check on, uh, yes, the productive part. You can ask number one, the productive part of a plant is called uh, dash, okay. And then uh, what name is, what name, what scientific name is given? So, let's say a middle part of a flower, then the middle part of a flower. So, check on this, and then you give any more questions here to answer. Uh, you given, yes, give two uses of flowers to human beings. We can still do this. Then I uh, draw a name, the male part of a flower. Yes, yes, uh, draw the stamen and name all the parts. Name show the anti head, show the piece, show the, the filament. You can do this no full time. Then, number five, we asked how do we call the female part of a flower? Yes, check that. 
Then uh, which part of a flower grows into a fruit after fertilization? We discuss about this. You can do this. So then uh, you can also do number seven. You are given uh, the diagram that shows part of a flower. Is to answer questions. So this is a uh, pistil, the stamen. So you ask to answer part R and part S. Yes. So we check on the functions of part S and part part R and part S. Then we are also given to look at uh, yes, you are named the part R and S and the functions. Then we ask you uh, why why are petals of flowers brightly colored? So majorly you find that. Uh, the, the petals going back going back to the flower okay going back to the flower you can see flowers uh, their parts are brightly colored okay so we can be asked why are yes why are parts of a flower brightly colored okay yeah this is very important checking on this these bright colors attract pollinators so they can ask the importance of petals the petals attract pollinators. That's why they are brightly colored. Okay? Uh, and then when you check either, okay, let us maybe again check on, they can ask you functions of other parts or each part here. When we check uh, on the ovary here, we say the ovary, uh, ovary grows into, uh, into a fruit. Okay? And then the ovaries grow into seeds. So you can ask which part of a flower grows into, grow into seeds after fertilization. There will be the ovaries. Then the style, we say the style holds the stigma in the position. Okay? And then for the stigma, receives pollen grains. They can ask you, which part of a flower receives pollen grains? Okay? That is the stigma. And then that's why we say that for the stigma, the style and the ovary are given one name as capo, which is the pistil, the female part of a flower. Then coming this side, we also asked to give the look at this, the anther or anther head. You can ask you what they function here. Majorly, we see this part, the anther is majorly used as a reproductive part. Okay, and it has got a, it, it, it contains the productive cells. This part here, we can say produces male cells called pollen grains in plants. And then for the filament holds the anther head in a position. So this given together, these ones uh, will give one name as stamen. So you can be asked what name is given to the male part of the flower. That is, a, that is stamen. Okay. And then we look at uh, other parts like uh, a group of, of flowers. Okay. Yes. A uh, group of flowers, a group of petals. Okay. Yes, a uh, group of uh, uh, group of sepals. We can be asked such uh, such questions. So we can look here. At least look at some symbol over here. We can be asked a group of what? Okay, just look at a uh, note here. Okay. Yes, just look at this. So you can be asked. Uh, look at a group of a group of petals. Yeah, so this one we shall call this corolla. Okay, it is called corolla. So you can be asked simply name given to a group of petals. And then uh, when you go to a group of a group of sepals, okay, a group of sepals, these ones are called the calyx. Okay. You can call them calyx. Yeah, calyx is a group of sepals. Okay, and then uh, that's a group of sepals. Okay, then we can look at uh, the nail parts of a flower. The nail parts of a flower. Okay. Uh -huh. So we discuss this earlier so you can answer this. The middle part of the flower, what name is given to the middle part of the flower? Then uh, lastly here, you can see the female part of the flower. The female part of the flower. 
Okay? Yes, so you can also still answer this because look at this. Yes, so you can answer. When it asks you what name is given to the female, the male part of the flower, and then what name is given to the female part of the flower. This is uh, very important. Yes, so uh, looking at uh, the male parts, okay, the, of the flower and the male parts, that uh, brings us to the end of our lesson today. Okay? Uh, this gives us the end of our lesson and then uh, you give and please have time go through yes go through your work uh, We've looked at this majorly reproduction in plants looking at asexual reproduction Okay, yes, so when we get together we shall maybe go ahead and look at the asexual part So for this part here majorly we have seen that uh, uh, We this use of reproductive cells which are the ovaries, okay, and the pollen grains. The male gra the pollen grains are the male productive cells, and, the fem and then the ovaries are the female productive cells. Uh, we've looked at the part of the flower and the functions, okay? Yes, so you can still have your time to go through this. This will help you uh, in your revision. Please use your, use your time, ask the questions left with you, and then we can end here for now. But still, you can follow us on uh, BTN TV. Always watch BTN TV. Check our YouTube channels. Uh, check on uh, our websites, Wisdom Center website. Uh, check on WhatsApp groups. We always put questions there. You can easily have access to that. Wish you the best.